I've got a good one for you today, Common Sensors. Former NFL player uses sovereign citizen uh, defense in the courtroom. Welcome to the Common Sense Academy. I'm Joe Pometto, Joe the Lawyer, your host today. If you like my content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. It's a free way to support the show, to incentivize me to make more videos, and to tell YouTube that I have fans and that people like my content. That gets me a higher ranking. I also have an email list below. Sign up, join my email list, get notifications of new videos. Also, you get a free PDF of the history and examination of the sovereign citizen movement done by Joe the lawyer himself. Now before we dig into this article about the ex-NFL player who's uh uh, who's using sovereign citizen tactics and ideas in the courtroom, excuse me, ear itch, uh, let's do what you really came here for the same time, Sip. And I've got, I've got, oh yes, not 7-Eleven, uh, not your, your drip brew in your kitchen, Dunkin' Donuts. Let's do the same time, Sip. Dunkin' Donuts, cough. getting towards the end here. Ah, delicious. Oh, one more thing before I dig into this article. I want you to know some of these videos, I've been reading the articles. Let me know in the comments if you prefer that I read them or and do a full screen like this where you can see me and listen to me, or if you prefer a split screen so that you can see the, the article and see my face while I read it. Different YouTubers do different things. I want to know what my audience likes. So I pulled this article and the description is below. Oh, one more thing. There's a video attached to this, which I am going to show at the end of my video. You can watch this NFL player, Kabir Gabaja Biamila, uh, give an explanation that he gave to the media. Um, so this is an article out of uh, the Post Crescent. It's part of the USA Today network. It looks like local USA Today, Green Bay Press Gazette. The article is titled, Church Obtains Harassment Restraining Orders Against Kabir Gabaja Biamila Ch and Church Brothers. It's out of Green Bay. It says, Kabir Gabaja Biamila, and for those who don't know, he was actually a really good player in the NFL in the, I, I believe, I could be wrong on this, the early 2000s um, to the early 2010s. Uh, he was he was an excellent player. I mean, I, I think he was on their Super Bowl team when they beat the Steelers. Boo! Huge Steeler fans here. So this guy's uh, he's a multimillionaire. Or at least he should be. Kabir Gabaja Biamila figures Ron Jung and Providence Academy will owe him something like $8 million at the end of four years when he is finally allowed to present them with the bill. And he hasn't come up with the total yet that he says Brown County Court Commissioner Phoebe Mix owes him. Something he figures at a rate of $10 per second. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that is a billable, I mean, you're talking billable hours. You know, you think attorneys charge high. Woo, $10 per second. For labeling him, he wants to bill the county commissioner for labeling him a respondent to a legal action over which Mix presided on Friday. So last Friday, uh, listen, the respondent is just what they write on the legal documents. <laughs> Okay, Mix occasionally had to rein in arguments that strayed far afield from the original purpose of the hearing to determine whether former Green Bay Packers player Gabaja Biamila and his religious followers should be legally enjoined against bothering Jung or setting foot on the property at a Christian school that Jung now presides over. Um, and a a enjoining means to put a restraining order. It's a court order telling someone not to do something. That's my two, just so you understand. It can be, it can be in any form. It can say, don't go on this person's property. Don't call this person. That's what enjoining means. So the case stems from an incident December 17th at the Assembly of God Church where Gabaja Biamila sent two armed men more like children, but we'll get to that. Jordan Salmi and Ryan DeSmith to attend a Christmas pageant being performed by students of Providence Academy. DeSmith, 22, and Salmi, 24, are accused in Brown County Court with trespassing for failing to leave when told 
to by Jung and police. And both are also accused of carrying concealed pistols into the event along with 34 rounds of ammunition. <coughs> the two did not display weapons nor create a disturbance. Gabaja Bihamila, who showed up as they were being arrested, left the premises when police told him to and was not charged. He later said the Smith and Salmi attended the event at his request to photograph Gabaja Biamila's children participating in the pageant because Gabaja Biamila, who shares custody of the children with his ex-wife, objected to their, to their participation on religious grounds. Gabaja Biamila professes membership to Straightway Truth Ministry, a group that identifies itself as a Hebrew Israelite church. While Gabaja Biamila protests that his is a multiracial, peace loving group, Jung has suggested that the group had ties to the Black Hebrew Israelite movement, which contains radical fringe elements identified by the Southern Poverty Law Center as hate groups. Gabaja Biamila told the Green Bay Press Gazette earlier this week his group takes a literal approach to following both the Bible and the United States Constitution, but it, that it's all about loving God and loving our neighbor. That's it. Uh, the next headline says metal detector set up for hearing. Friday's hearing was only indirectly related to the misdemeanor charges Salmi and DeSmith are facing. It was held because Judge Jung was petitioning for a court order forbidding all three men from contacting him or setting foot on Providence premises or any of its events. The hearing was unusual from the onset when all participants and onlookers were required to pass through a metal detector and a phalanx of sheriff's deputies just to get inside. A level of security that one of the deputies said was a rarity for that particular courtroom in such an otherwise minor legal dispute. Once it got underway, Gabaja Biamila started in with a mix of legal arguments called from constitutional law and the common law. Oh, we got, we love the common law here, friends. We love the common law. We are not respondents, Gabaja Biamila protested when Mix called the case. We are only men. We'll bill you $10 per second if you want to. Call us that. Unless you can point to the law that says you have to call us respondents. I'm at the courtroom, not in the courtroom. I'm not trying to take up your time. My daddy called me a man. Respondent is not my title. You have been notified you are going to be billed. Sidetrack, friends, common censors, that is eerily similar to sovereign citizen language. Salmi began his argument in a similar vein. I, state of man, not defendant or respondent. Gabaja Biamila at one point objected to Jung referring to his sons and daughter as kids. What does kids mean? Gabaja Biamila asked Jung on the witness stand. Did you ever know me as father to a baby goat? <laughs> I mean, wow. I wish, I wish I had a little baby goat on my t-shirt right now. Did you get notified I no longer identify them as my children? That on October 1st, I told you I no, long, no longer consider them child or children. He later explained that they are his sons and daughters or seeds, but not child or children. He did not explain why the terminology mattered. Amidst the confusion about terminology, several facts emerged which did not seem under dispute. Yes, Providence allows some staff members and teachers to carry firearms at the school as Gabaja Biamila previously claimed, and makes no effort to prevent visiting parents from doing so. No, there were no signs or orders for people not to carry weapons into the Christmas pageant. Yes, Jung was aware Gabaja Biamila and his wife had split up and were fighting over custody of the children, and he knew Gabaja Biamila opposed the children's attendance at Providence and participation in the pageant. And yes, prior to the start of the pageant, Gabaja Biamila already had presented Jung with a bill for $150,000 for the unpermitted use of his property. That is, three sons and a daughter in the school's Christmas pageant. This is theft of service, Gabaja Biamila argued. You can't use people's stuff without compensation. Am I a slave? You're restricting my liberty. You're using my sons and daughters just like your ancestors use slaves. Bang! Ouch! Incident caused fear. Where they disagreed was on whether Gabaja Biamila had tried to bully or intimidate Mr. Jung. Gabaja said he never intended or threatened Jung and he would have kept clear of the school had Jung asked. 
We don't know if that's true, but okay. But Jung said Gabaja accused him of being one of his wife's flying monkeys, and that Gabaja Biamila's YouTube videos contain Jung's picture, location of the academy's two campuses, and an accusation that Jung had gone from being the school's headmaster to slave master. He said he never felt directly intimidated by Gabaja, but worried that one of his followers would go too far and actually hurt someone. That's probably a legitimate concern. Following the pageant, Jung said he started the school's Christmas break two days early out of safety concerns and enlisted police and private security for drop-off and pickup times at the school. He said families dropped out of the school because of worries over the incident. Do you not understand what you've done, he demanded of Gabaja. In the end, Mix ordered that Gabaja, Salma, and DeSmith not come within 100 feet of Jung, the old school and school events for four years. She turned down Jung's request to have Gabaja take down the YouTube video calling him a slave master. Jung declined to comment after the hearing. Gabaja said he was not surprised by the outcome. It's a wicked system. I live according to a righteous code of ethics. They live according to a wicked one but it is what it is. He said he plans to build Jung whoop, whoop, whoops, five, $6,000 a day for restrictions of his liberty uh, over the next four years, resulting in a final bill of more than $8 million. He had no explanation for the d dollar amount, but said that's a discount. He already handed Jung a bill of 41000 for seven days during which he was under a temporary restraining order Jung had obtained. In addition, charging Mix $10 a second for calling him a respondent, Gabaja said he plans to file a grievance to the judicial, judicial system for what she did. She went against my constitutional rights. Whew! There is a lot to unpack here. Number one, I'm not saying Gabaja Biamila is part of the black Israelites, though this church is associated with the black Israelites. Um... I will say, though, I remember several years ago, I was walking down the street in Philadelphia because I have some friends out there, and I came across a group of the black Israelites, and they had a table set up and all these really large, wild photos, five or six of them yelling in the street. A um, little bit intimidating. Uh, you know, that, that like I said, that group is sort of a sovereign citizen spinoff. Maybe that's a little too much, but um, they, you know, uh, they're sovereign citizen-like. They, they, people out there claim that they're dangerous. So it, it seems to me like Kabaja's group, uh, Kabaja Biamila's group is lightly associated with them. I don't know. A uh, couple levels of analysis on this. Number one, this is like a custody dispute gone bad. Um Gabaja called this this teacher professor um, a flying monkey. Um, the so this is like a you know he sent these two kids to the pageant to photograph his his children. These other two 20 year olds to the pageant photograph his children. These kids were armed. I, I mean you know uh, I, I don't know I don't know I'm I'm for you know legally carrying your gun, but what are you doing? Like what what is going on here? This is like a this is this is a multi-layered dispute, right? We have a custody battle wrapped in a church battle, a battle between these two churches. They're going on and they're going on YouTube and and talking shit. Uh, it's, oh, it's hilarious. Um, the reason this came to my attention, it was on the um, Reddit blog, and he's in there. He's in there billing the court, billing his opponent. That's a classic sovereign citizen move. Uh, claiming that they called him the wrong name. He didn't appear to challenge the jurisdiction, but did claim that the, the, the court had challenged his constitutional rights. Again, um, it's just, it's really in line. It's like a quasi sovereign citizen um, argument and it and and it, you know it, it's cult like it is sort of cult like you'll see in this video he claims that his, he is a cult in a way um, it's interesting how this sovereign citizen ideology can spill into like 
this church ideology or it can be found over here and little pieces and snippets of it are used by other people all around um, very interesting and uh, very harmful uh, you know the, but it, it's a little bit worrisome you know this guy as a former Packer uh, he's likely very wealthy uh, very highly influential individual um, out there sort of using these these uh, frankly um, well uh, uh, nonsensical tactics but it's it's a, a part of an ideology that can be dangerous and that's worrisome um, you know this whole issue the reason he's there is because he had a temporary restraining order and they're putting a restraint another restraining order on him for four years um, you know, you send two armed kids to go photograph your children at the at, the, at, at a Christmas pageant from an ex-wife. You taught, you know, you call this guy a slave master. It's true in these cults, these strange religious orders, that people can be dangerous. People might take something that someone said and go off and do something crazy. I mean, we see it all the time now with mass shootings, etc. So um, I really can't condone this behavior. Um, respondent is just a word that, that the courts use uh, to make everything easier to understand. Um, I, I felt I had to address this article here. Uh, you know, an ex-NFL player, multimillionaire, running a church of sovereign citizens? I, I don't know, I don't know. He seems like a, a, he could be a nice and charismatic man. Um, so uh, there's going to be a little clip of him after afterwards. Uh, I don't really have much more to say except, again, this is like a custody battle, church rivalry turned into sovereign citizen nonsense. I mean, it's just, it's hilarious. It is totally, it's just hilarious. Um, and, you know, this stuff is, is getting into the heads of multi-millionaire <laughs> ex-NFL players. I mean, where is it going next? Where is it going next? So thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe, like, comment, and share. Uh, also, sign up for my, my email list. Get a free PDF on the history and explanation of the sovereign citizen movement written by yours truly, Joe Pometto, Joe the lawyer of the Common Sense Academy. Now, take a look at the video from the article. The article is in the description below. Thank you. Former Green Bay Packers player KGB talks to the media for the first time since two of his fellow church members were arrested last week for going to a children's Christmas pageant armed with pistols and 34 rounds of ammunition and refusing to leave. I have a right to, but it looked like at the end of the day, my rights got trespassed against and their rights were protected. The Packers. I mean, I used to play for the Green Bay Packers, I and mean, we just did an interview with a whole bunch of Packer fans. And man, they are extreme <laughs> when it comes to back. They out there in the cold. We all like, like, how do you guys do this stuff? Like, we're here to see Aaron Rodgers. I mean, it was like great. And they're a cult. I'll call them a cult. We're a cult too, but our life revolves around Jesus, and we want to just live a peaceful life. We're peaceful people. We don't look for trouble, but if people come in, we will defend ourselves. We're not going to sit here and just let you do rat to tat us. We're going to defend ourselves. But we, I promise you, we don't start anything. We just live a life. We have our YouTube channel. We're in our YouTube channel. We, 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 we think that anybody's going there, they're coming here to learn. But I'm not on the street saying, you need to believe the way I believe. I'm, we're not that. We're not, I know they call them black Hebrew Israelites. And I'm not condoning or accepting or not, I'm just saying that that's but that's not who I am. I'm part of straightway truth ministry. And we have a, a, a assembly here in the in the Green Bay area called Straightway Praise Land. And that's what I'm the head of. And we are just a few people just trying to live a peaceful life. And we just want to keep the commandments of God. We want to love God, love our neighbor. That's all we're about. We're about loving God, loving our neighbor. That's it.